But no, we're on his way to the job. To the job, we're on his way to the job. Uh, we started digging the footings out uh, Friday, so part of them are done. Uh, it's just a normal excavation. It's basically one metre deep. Obviously, building legs have now changed, so you need a 150 cavity, so it's no longer 600 wide, it's now 650. You know, just put something else onto us builders. So, we'll get there in a moment, we'll show you around the footing and exactly how it's been dug. See you in a bit. So, this is the layout, the drawing. As you can see there, it's a side extension. It's going all the way across the side of the house and then returns around the back. So what we've basically got is that room on the back and the room on the side. As you can see there, the side portion. And then you can see the back portion with a small single storey pitched roof on the back. We can mark this out for the footing by, we've got one measurement there, which is 4140. And then we've also got a measurement there, which is 3500 from the back of the house. We can actually bring that across and square this down and make sure it runs parallel with the house. And then it comes across the flush, the front of the house flush. If there's any measurements that are not on there, you can always check. If you look, these drawings are scaled, so you can use a scale ruler at one to 50 and we can check that measurement. And get it marked out on the ground and we start getting it dug. If we look on this part of the drawing, you can see the footing. That'll be a meter deep to the bottom of the footing. You've then got your width. You've got to have at least 100 mil either side with the toe. It's filled with 300 mil of concrete and then built up. We shall use a slightly different method. We won't use block and brick. We'll use trench block to get it just below the ground level and then go block and brick from there. So, as you can see, it's get full of dirt. When we're at these residential properties, we have to use the skips because obviously you don't want it tipping on people's drives. Diggers here. And as you can see, you can see the red marks. over there it's all marked out on the ground and then the footing's dug full of water at the minute i'll get that out and raining at the weekend so the footing for this one is going basically all the way down the side of the house for a side extension then it returns around the rear of the house there so it's been dug out it's a meter deep well this one's actually slightly deeper because we've had to go down to that pipe that manhole's got to be moved to the outside of the property. And then it's 650 wide. Follows all the way around. We've exposed the original footing. And gone down to the bottom of that. Let's get it all dug. And then we can get some concrete poured when the inspector's been. Inspected the ex excavation. So you can see we're now digging, now using the digger following those lines that we've marked out to the red paint. You have to make sure that you use a proper line marker, don't use an ordinary paint because it'll uh, contaminate the ground. Footing's now dug, but the problem is now we found a land drain that goes all the way up this footing. As 
see it's there and also there so unfortunately it's gonna have to be dug out so we're gonna have to go down to that depth at the bottom of that drain all the way across from that point there you can see we've shuttered the pipe up so that's the part that that drain there has got to move to here but you can't concrete directly over it so it's shuttered up like that and then it'll be bridged with lintels when we build on top of the footing obviously that water will have to come out there we'll just get out this morning we'll get this bit dug down now so we can get that pipe out it's obviously unused it's all full of mud so it's not used anyway it's an old land drain and then uh, concrete will be here this afternoon right, like i've said when we're digging these footings you need to look out for services so when you come up the drive up here you can see that the gas main goes inside of the house there you can see that we've got an electric box there so there must be some kind of electric we've picked the gas main up there so, so all this side this bit here has have to be dug by hand and then if you look there there's the electric cable that comes up into that box the water main fortunately comes up the drive this side and underneath the front door so we haven't had to worry about that there you go concrete's now going in got lines sprayed on there the levels, but we've used a laser level. Bad board there, Ben. Got that board, please, mate. There you go. Concrete's poured. Nice straight footing. See those pipes will be bridged. Well, they're quite uh, narrow on this, can they? But yeah, 600 wide, all the way around. Meeting the existing footing in the house. There you go. Tomorrow when that's dry, we can get built on it now. Get some trench block, get it up just below the ground level. Course it up with some coursing bricks, which are basically concrete commons. And then if we start building up to oversight, oversight is basically where you come out of the ground and you're up to DPC level and you can just set your set your floor out, sorry. <laughs> it's a bit cold this morning, my nose is running. So you can set your floor out, get your slab poured, so you get it built up to oversight. Obviously the building inspector will have to come out and inspect the oversight just to check that the insulation's there and enough stone. And then we can carry on with the build. <laughs> hey, so 14's poured, got a trench block, these are 350 wide trench blocks, the building regs have changed, we need a wider cavity, they're going to be laid now in there, just below the ground, that'll bring us up and then we can build up to oversight. Right, so we've got this footing built almost now. Uh, we can start building it up, get it up to oversight. Need to match those bricks, which uh, we've got a guy from Emmys um, on the case at the minute. So, and we've just had to get the nib ready for the pillar that holds steel work up inside. I'll show you that now. So obviously there's a footing gone in there, got a nib there. Obviously there's a steel going to hold that corner of the wall up that comes off a, a column that's built up off that. Footing's coming along folks. Ben's been working hard, ain't you Ben? <laughs> well, you can see. Trench block. Trench block will finish there, then the footing will step down. We'll use these concrete commons to just get it two bit below the soil. And we can build it up to the DPC. 
pick the DP suite up, which is there, you can see it. And then we'll pour the slab. So, now started building up to oversight, which is basically up to DPC, so as we can then get the slab poured. We have found in this one that basically there's something called red ash underneath the slab, so all that's got to be dug off, got rid of, because it ain't good. Right, this side's all up to damp. Lads are just working on that side, just getting it up. Won't be long now, and we can get this dug off, get some stone on it, build it up, insulation, get the slab poured. Before we can do that, as we've said before, got a load of red ash on the drive, which has got to go. Got to dig that out, fill it back up with stone. Horrible job, but someone's got to do it. This is the man that's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> <There's someone. laughs> Are you getting on there, Bippers? Two or three more courses are up to damp. Jobs are good in. Right, it's all built now, it's all up to damp. The whole lot. Oh, just one block going there, what Tommy's is sorting out now. But now, all this red ash, the lads have got to dig it off, got to go. Can't stay underneath here. Can't be underneath the slab at all. And then this man all here. New piece of pipe got going all the way through. And where them two red lines are there. New man all sort of over there. I have to connect it up. On the outside down there, you can see it's been bridged. Right, so we've got to dig down. Find this pipe, obviously that manhole's in the middle of the slab, so it's got to go. I'm going to put a complete new piece of pipe in, all the way from that wall, all the way across to that wall. And then we're going to put a new manhole in there where the marks are. So, obviously we've got, we're going to replace it with a, a smaller manhole. Got the amount of branches we need it'll go that way we've got new branches for the drains that are going up the side of the new extension that one will continue into there and then we've got risers and a new top and then obviously got some uh, new lamps of pipe so it can be all be done in one lamp and that way there'll be no issue with any blockages there you go, thanks to Tark 1 MOT. I went into the slab. There's Beppers just sitting drinking a brew. Part four, man. You got some bait on. We fell it up with stone. On top of that stone now goes the insulation. Regulations have changed, so it's now 150 mil underneath the slab. 150 mil solid insulation underneath the slab. And then you have the upstand, which uh, makes your cavity break. Uh, sorry, it's off your thermal break around the outside. 25 mil. And then we can pull the conkers slab on top of that. There you can see. Beppers, young Beppers, is whackering the hard pull down, so it's nice and compact. And then we'll put a sand blinding in to stop it, to stop the hardcore puncturing any of the DPC. Then we've got 
a damp membrane there. That's a 1200 gauge, I think it is. So sticking up to take what we need. That gets rolled out over the whole lot, then the insulation goes on top of that. There you can see, we've got the 150 insulation. We've got the thin stuff that we cut for the upstand for the thermal brake around the outside. And then we can pour the concrete. There you go, Beppers. <laughs> nice thin layer of sand covering the stone, just stopping it to uh, perforating the DPC or the DPM, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you cover all them stones, Beppers. Right, so got the barrows out, got a tarp out ready for the concrete coming. It's concrete day today. So, we've got all the insulation underneath. You've got 150 mil, you've got your 25 mil upstand for thermal bridging. And then we've got a tarp. The 1200 gauge sheet on top of the insulation to stop the concrete eating away at it. That's new building now. Well, I'll say new, fairly old now. So now, basically, what we're going to do is fill this in with concrete all the way around. Not give us our sub base. Lads are just lining some level lines across onto the wall. As soon as the truck comes, we get it filled up. Stood up for once. Oh, it's on video. There you go, folks. You can see the filled cavity with a weak mortar mix it just stops the bricks pushing in it's obviously the mortars up to the ground level on the outside stop anything pushing in all the way across now we can start building Tommy's just sticking a mix on ready for get these corners up and get it running obviously <coughs> that's a mark out for your windows, so there's a big patio door going in there, and then it's marked out across here. You can see there, door, there's a back door going there, and then we'll mark the windows out at the window out. There you can see Ben fixing the cavity wall, uh, the, the wall starter tires. He doesn't need one there though, because it's been toothed out. Don't need that one. <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> oh. See, rookie Harry. Rookie Harry. Nearly qualified sure in the building the industry. Up, to be fair. <laughs> sure out, yeah, we only need one on the internal. Take the damp off, do you then? No, take the damp off. So obviously, we have to do a cut down here and put a DPC in to stop any transfer of damp from the outside brick to the inside skin, because this will be the inside skin. I'll show you around here. As you can see, they've been fixed. The tires hook into there. But obviously in the middle here, we're gonna have to do a cut 
and put DPC slid into it to stop any damp because this is the external wall coming through there around the back of it through and then into the internal wall which will be inside right so obviously this bit's going to be toothed out I don't know if you can see down there uh, we've not, not notched the bricks out and toothed it in obviously we took we've took the bed sizes off the original house and we've added them to this stuff which is then clamped to the wall there's one up that far end up there you can see it which has got the same marks on it for the beds and then we can just build that through and it makes sure that it's level with the existing house obviously Obviously only works if the house is level, but this house is slightly out of level. So we will have a slight step where they're connecting there. Right, so we've got the slab down, as you can see behind me. Uh, and now obviously we're going from oversight up, so from DPC upwards. So we basically start building. So I'll show you what's happening. There you go, slabs all down, that's laid as you saw in the last video and now we're building upwards of DPC so as you can see the DPC has been rolled out we actually took the DPM from under the floor underneath the block with as well just help seal it all and then we start building up obviously bit works come up three courses block work is equivalent to three courses of bit work you build your corners with your 100 mils in the corner Tie in any doorways you need to lay out, mark those out. Just basically, start building like that up till you get up to the first lift, and you'll need a scaffold. Alright, so insulation you need to put obviously, your, whatever you're putting in, whether you're putting your solid or your cavity bats or whatever, they've opted for a cavity pack with a 150 cavity because that's new building legs now for the U value. So, as you can see, that's been added in, it goes in in between the cavity. Uh, see, insulation's going in. Bit where we built up according. Like I say, it'll sit on your ties or sit across there. Which, now we've gone for a 150 cavity. Right, go with a longer tie. Your tie set across there, across your insulation. Terms and conditions are costed at the Tesco Mobile, we know a little help goes a long way. So, Tommy's working away there, building that up, fill his insulation in and about. Just learning, aren't you, Tom? Right, so there you can see we've had to do something called toothing in. So, the existing bit work on the house has to be tied in with so you can use wool starter ties or you can basically chop these half bricks out here and too firm tie it in obviously use a grinder you can see there where we've grinded the bed out and then we chop the brick out and then you can build now yeah, look at the salt coming out of those bricks and then you can transfer your bed lines on your profiles as you can see them there and build the cross, transfer them all the way around. There's Beppers laying some brack. Get it up to joy start, and then we'll go again scaffolding. All right, so we uh, that'll conclude the first video. Uh, just basically for the footings, foundations, up to oversight, and obviously the first bit of the build. We'll come back when we're up to the joist level and we'll show you there's a few steels that have got to go in. Uh, obviously joists will go in, whether they'll go in before we finish the build up to the wall plate of the roof or whether we'll put them in after. Uh, I'm not sure yet, it depends on uh, what's included, you know, what's entailed on that drawing when we have a quick look at it later on. But yeah, join us for the next part of the build, next video and uh, like and subscribe please folks. Because uh, the more you do that, the more videos we can put out for you and the more we can help you out. Cheers. See you in a bit. Bye.